Hello. I have an interest light, so I have to ignore you for just a sec. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Carol, and I'm a software engineer at Capital One. I work in one of the front-end teams there, but today I'm going to tell you a story from a few years ago, very early in my career. It's called Panic-Driven Development. <laughs> um, it's an entirely fictional story. Any resemblance with the truth is a mere coincidence. It was my first job in tech, so I worked for a fairly small company. It was a Monday morning, so... I was sat at my desk with my headphones on, tap, 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 as I did most of the time. I used to get in, write code for eight hours, and then I'd go home. On Monday mornings is also when we did our weekly deployments to production. Someone else on my team was doing a deployment that week, so I didn't worry too much about it. It was all fine, it all went okay. But a few minutes later, one of the, my colleagues from support came over. He was like, mm, we're seeing this weird issue with the platform. Would you mind coming over and having a look? So they were in our training room, training one of our potential business partners on how to use the platform, and they found that the user creation form wasn't working. So suffice it to say, the user creation form was a pretty important part of the platform, and guess who worked on it the week before? Oh yes, this gal. <laughs> so my first reaction was like, I had that feeling that you do when your stomach just like drops inside your body. <laughs> and in the calmest way that I could, I told them, look, I'll go have a look at it. Just, it'll be a minute. So I went back to my desk as inconspicuously as I could, and I started work. I found a bug. I worked out a fix. I committed it. I pushed it. I moved the code to the staging server. I did some testing, and I put the code in production in under 15 minutes. They were very, very frantic 15 minutes. But then I went back to the training room and I said, oh, this is really strange. I can't really see anything. Would you mind just refreshing the page and seeing if that works? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you know? <laughs> just like magic, it worked. Oli, you know, it wasn't magic. It was like some frantic keyboard mashing. But they just said something like, oh, maybe it was something on my machine. That's fine. And that was the end of the story, really. I did tell my team what happened afterwards, and they were really understanding. You know, they said, you know, everyone breaks things sometimes, it's fine. And that did make me feel better. It made me feel like I didn't have to hide it and like do it all on my own. But after that, since then, I've been working on other code bases, and most of them have automatic quality gates. And I know some people in tech see, see gates as a bit of a barrier sometimes. Maybe they don't like writing tests. Maybe they don't see the point. But um, sorry, one sec. I didn't time this right. Um, I kind of, after that incident, I started seeing quality gates as something that should be mandatory in every code base, and that it was a bit like irresponsible not to have them. But you know, over time, you learn that testing is a cost, and depending on your project, depending on the size and the impact, it might not make sense to have it. And testing is more like a way of reducing risk, of building trust with your stakeholders, and like making your project more stable and robust. But one of the things that I noticed is when we have these conversations about what to cover and what to test, we often forget about the perspective of less experienced engineers. We think of product, we think of ops, we think of developers, but we don't think of the people that are just starting. And knowing that there are checks in place puts you in a really, really comfortable position to contribute, regardless of your level of skill and experience. It frees you up to try things without being horribly scared, and it helps build up your confidence right at the beginning of your career. So the place I went on to work after that had really, really solid gates. And I thought it was going to be a scary thing, but instead it was more like a safety net. I kind of just got there and just tried stuff, and I got stuck in like from the start. And I found that really enjoyable. So I guess the story that I just told you wouldn't have happened if we had automatic testing place in my first job. But it wasn't worth it. The absolute horror of those 15 minutes was not worth it. No one should be panicking during their day-to-day -day job. So when you're out there and you know, you're deciding what to test and you're designing your testing strategy, think about the people that will contribute to your project, especially less experienced folks. Give them a really good safety net and they'll take the leap and they'll build really great things for you. Thank you.